All right. Well, thank you, first of all, for coming. Uh, I'm very excited to see so many people, so many new faces. Um, this is also for me the first time to do something like this, organize something like this. And I never appreciated the, I never expected the great support I got from the staff from the Center for Higher Education. So it's really cool for me as a young, uh, well, student, staff member to get the support and uh, provided such an opportunity. So today I would like to tell you something. Uh, and please feel free to have lunch or eat because uh, I appreciate your being here and your valuable time. So today I would like to tell you something about the virtual exchange program. Um, and which you might have read in the description I am involved in uh, as a student assistant. So this is next to my studies. I do this as a side job. So some people, you know, work at the bar or at a restaurant. Well, I work for the virtual exchange project. project. Um, so before we dive into the details of the program, I would first like to tell you something about myself. Um, so who am I? Uh, I'm Iris. Nice to meet you. I did my bachelor's. Oh, this is not visible. I did my bachelor's uh, or undergraduate uh, in forest and nature conservation, specializing in policy and society at Wageningen University in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, after that, I continued with two masters. Uh, I continued with forest and nature conservation. And next to that, I did, or I am doing development and rural innovation, which is like kind of like international development. So, and currently I'm doing my master's internship here at Kyoto University. Um, and part of it uh, is exploring the possibilities uh, for Kyoto University to join a virtual exchange program, which was my own idea. Um, and well, like I said, my, my affiliation with the program is my job as a student assistant for the virtual exchange program since October 2018. And I still continue doing that today. Even from here in Kyoto, I can continue working because it's all online. So yeah, um, next to studying, I like nature. I like trees, of course, climbing them, studying them. And in my free time, I also enjoy cycling, sometimes in rain, because you know the Netherlands can be very wet as well, but also in summer and fall, always. I like cycling. That's maybe because I'm Dutch. Um, all right, so today's goal in this little time we have, only an hour, I would like to introduce you to the virtual exchange program, uh, introduce you to the partner universities that are uh, associated or yeah, like part of the alliance. <coughs> I would like to tell you about the procedure of following your courses and also the assessment that is uh, part of it. And then uh, to also get you guys thinking and you know, not only me, I don't want it only to be me talking. I would like to uh, get creative together and think about how we could well, what, what the future of online or normal education would look like. So we will, um, uh, later on, we will, I will we have some materials, pens and paper. We will get, try to get your ideas down and, in, and we will finalize with grouping them and uh, see what comes out of it. So um, this image represents uh, of the flow of the program so as, as the title says it's like a student exchange program but it's all it happens all online so for example there's a student at the home university which can for example be Wageningen um, and you can follow courses at another university the host university for example uh, well, Kyoto University if they will join and then I will learn uh, 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 from an online course that is developed by Kyoto University. Um, this provides me study, ex student study experience. And for following this course, I will get credits, which I can use for my uh, education program at my home university. 
So I used the credits I gained from the host university's course in my own study program back home. So um, that is what the virtual exchange program is. It's, it's very flexible, uh, an online learning experience to give you also credits. Um, and that is what distinguishes uh, the program from just following MOOCs, because you do not, easy, well, they're not accredited, so uh, it's, it's harder to get credits for them. It's not usual. So uh, you can take high level uh, short courses. Uh, usually they last like six to eight weeks. Um, you can take courses outside of your regular program, uh, which I think is a big benefit. I've, I myself, for example, follow the course on space exploration, which is totally different than forestry or development, but you know, it sounded interesting to me. And uh, because the courses are offered by another university, um, there's the opportunity to, f yeah, to uh, choose from a broader range of courses than just what your own university might offer. offer. And then, of course, the big, one of the biggest advantages is gaining credits uh, at another university. Uh, and then the learning format is also, of course, very flexible because uh, you are following the course online on your own laptop. You know, you can, you can uh, watch the, the clips at any time you like, at any place you like. Um, so that's very... Uh, or can be very beneficial, especially in times like this with the coronavirus, you know, traveling is not always beneficial. So yeah, then staying at home might be, uh, might be good. Then of course there's international learning experience, your follow, co follow courses developed by other institutions. Um, and there's no additional costs, so you do not pay any tuition fee or, or uh, other application fee, and there's no limit to participants. Um, so let me show you the universities that are currently involved. Uh, from the Netherlands we have Delft, the University of Technology, which uh, have, they, yeah, they have a very unique offering of courses. Uh, for example, yeah, a lot of technology programming also, also related to ethics in technology. Then we have, of course, Wageningen University. We have a lot of courses about food, uh, nutrition, also animal behavior. Uh, then there's Leiden University, which have more on social sciences. We have the Catholic University of Louvain in Belgium, Sorbonne University from France, EPFL from Switzerland, UC3M from Madrid in Spain, there's Rice University from the United States. We have the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and then the University of Adelaide in Australia, Queensland University in Australia, and Australian National University. So you can see there's a lot of partners involved, and they all from you know a different well, region of the world, and they all have like um, their own specialization. So that's very interesting and exciting. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Kyoto University would also be an interesting uh, partner to have in this list. Um, so again, uh, more in detail, the, the, yeah, why, why, why it could be beneficial for students to participate. Uh, you can enrich your portfolio uh, by choosing different courses from high-end universities all around the world. You have access to different expertise uh, because you explore uh, knowledge from other regions and universities. It's online, super flexible, uh, and of course free. Uh, you have a diverse learning experience uh, with varied activities. Uh, for example, there's a course uh, on animal behavior which asks students to go to the zoo and observe uh, the behavior of the animals over there. Um, students are sometimes asked to write essays. Uh, there's a Wageningen course on food waste, which asks students to do a little experiment uh, with their own fridge. Um, and there's uh, quizzes and assignments at the end of each uh, module. 
Um, students can connect with each other because there's discussion forums where they're asked to share their thoughts. Um, and there are often peer review assignments, so they also get insight in uh, other students' work and how they might write or learn. And then for most students, uh, most importantly, is uh, gaining the credits. Uh, that's, like I said, this what distinguishes the program from just following MOOCs on edX, for example. So, um, in order to uh, make sure or accredit the courses, to be able to assign these study credits, uh, assessments have to be connected to the courses. Uh, this often is a written exam on campus, but not always has to be that. It differs also uh, what the university guidelines are. Um, often there's also uh, essays involved or written assignments. Um, and uh, so within the exchange program, the grade conversion is taken into account and there's like uh, agreements between the different universities. So it's easy to um, convert the grades from one university to the other. Um, so that makes it for students very easy. They do not have to ask their own university to, again, accredit the course or assess how many credits it is worth. That's done by the, ally uh, by the partners um, as part of becoming part of the alliance. So, now that you've heard this, what do you think? Are you ready to join? What do you think of this type of education? Um, I would now like to move into the more creative part of the workshop. Uh, oh, sorry. They have any questions of course, like yes. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> I, I think uh, ah. the, it's very good for students, but uh, for, for universities, we have to think about how to approve the quality credit. Quality of the education. Yeah. Can, can you get credit for your space exploration course? Yeah. Yes. You, you did. And who decided how you would get credit? Um, so approval between. Who decided that? The. Well, the UC3M. Like the, the it was from the university in Spain, from Madrid. And they have decided. Uh, they have. <coughs> Uh, appointed credits to this course and then they offer it for the other partners of the alliance. So they design the assignments and the exam. General agreement between all of the partners for any course you can get credit for. Yes, yes, all courses are for so, credits. So when I'm working on a master's in biology, yes. I have to get credit for creative writing poetry uh -huh. without any approval from my advisors. Um, Suppose I'm in my my home university. Yes. I'm working on a master's yes. in biology, and I take an online course in creative writing, and I say I want credit for this. Yes. Who decides whether I get credit or not? So if you would just pick a random course, indeed on creative writing, if you pick it on edX. Uh, you can get credit for it, but then you would have to ask your examination board at your home university. Look, I have a certificate of completion of this online course. Can I get credit for it? With the virtual exchange program, we have designated courses, only a, a limited amount. Uh, each university offers a limit. Yes, exactly. And these only... For this exchange. Exactly. So like... Some universities offer eight courses, other like one, or only one or two. And these are uh, uh, accredited by the university that offers them. 
already themselves. So it's a limited offer indeed. It's a very good question. We have a similar uh, consortium in Kyoto. We, there are many universities here in Kyoto. So the similar exchange. Ah, it's also with. Already, I mean. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, any more questions? Is, is it clear for everyone how, how it works with the, the courses and the credits and the course load, flexibility? <coughs> Well, that, that's good. I mean, I, I can imagine uh, it's, it's, uh, <coughs> it's complex. Of course, the, the number of member universities grow. Uh, not so fast, but there's not, we are also not really recruiting because actually it's still a pilot project. Mm -hmm. uh, it started in 2018 and it's last three years. So, oh no, it started in 2017. This year is, well, will be the end of the project. Mm -hmm. So we'll be evaluating how it is going. Um, and we are not really actively recruiting new uh, universities because we're still testing. But I really wanted to explore the possibilities. Um, so yeah, maybe, you know, if the project will continue after the pilot, there will be maybe try, try to recruit more universities. But Kyoto is always welcome to join. <laughs> Okay, so here's an example, or well, here's actually the overview of all the courses that are being offered. So you can see here, uh, which is also important to take in mind, this course is in Spanish. We also have courses in France, French language. Um, but here is one about mobile devices programming, so very technical. Here's the course I followed, Conquest of Space. Maybe it's a little small maybe to read. Here's a more general course, Introduction to Management, but inf Management Information Systems. So, you know, it's, it's introductory courses, but still it's, of course, it has a, a subject uh, a, a, and a specific focus. This one is on systems programming. That's more general. Comprendre la respiration, a French course. Uh, a Spanish course on the history of the world. English grammar and style, neuronal dynamics, and here we have the Wageningen courses about food security, nutrition, um, this one is from Leiden, clinical kidney, pancreas, and islet transplantation. transplantation. Um, yeah, here's some more programming and communication studies. Again, France co French courses, paradigms in biochemistry and cell biology, principles of economics. So you can see how broad the offer is, even though you know it's a select uh, um, group of. These are hopefully yes. From, uh, university. No, this is from all. all of them. This is from. This is the whole. How many uh, of these uh, one uh, provided? Uh, I think we have eight or nine. So these, yeah, so we have this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight courses, but that's, so that's, that's. 50%, it's a total like 16, 17. No, it's, this is more, this is not, <coughs> it goes up and down, see? 7, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, yeah, so the offer differs also a little bit, just like in regular university. So if there's no more questions, I would like to move on to the workshop part because time is going fast. Yes. All right. So what I would like to do now is uh, discuss with you and think about how you envision the future of education. Um, and. While doing that, I would like uh, to ask you to keep in mind uh, also certain issues. Think, for example, of plagiarism. Because, uh, you know, with the online education, you don't have clear sight on your students anymore. It all happens from home, all happens online. Uh, how are we going to address 
uh, the, the challenges that come with that. So like I said, plagiarism, what about cyber and data security where, you know, we're emailing around with all this student data and they have to upload assignment and uh, it's important to, to keep that in mind. Um, and how should we design the MOOCs, you know, are they pre-recorded in the studio? Uh, or do they maybe, you know, are they live uh, taught by the teachers? And also, do the students have to attend them live? Or, you know, if it's pre-recorded, they can watch it at any time they like. Then, uh, what about the exams, the assessments? Do the students really, as is the matter now, have to come to the, to the university and, and, and take the exam? Or will it maybe look like this? And can the exam also be, I don't know, through Skype or digital? Um, what about interaction? If students take the course from home, will there be enough interaction? I mean, it's certainly different than in the classroom. Yeah, we can do the peer reviews or the discussion fora, but not everyone will maybe participate in it. Um, and then finally, is this really what we are aiming for, the empty traditional classroom. Is that really what we want? Yeah, <laughs> In terms of, right you know, the health situation right now, this is favorable, but, <laughs> you know, in a few months, I don't know. So, um, I would like to ask you to maybe, you can think about it yourself, but maybe also you can get together with some of your neighbors, three or four people together. I've been told to not get too close in terms of health <laughs> issues, but... Um, and think about uh, the future of online education. And like I said, is this the future? Are we really transitioning to online education? Uh, yeah, what will courses come to look like in terms of interaction, in terms of assessments, accreditation, examination? What would you want if you're a student or a PhD student? What would help you with becoming a better learner? Or what do you think as would help students? Um, and yeah, the important question, is this what we want? Is this the future? And keep in mind the, 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 the risks I showed you in the previous slides. So I will hand out some markers and paper and post-its for you. Um, and please get together and then I will give you about 10 to 15 minutes to brainstorm and I will walk around a bit and assist you in the process. And uh, I would like to see what thoughts you can get on paper. Any questions about this now? Okay. I hope you had some time to discuss with each other learn from learn from each other and in the last bit of the session I would like to hear from you uh, what you came up with what your concerns are what your ideas are um, so I had a brief talk with the middle group in the middle already and they told me uh, they were a little bit concerned about if there would be enough uh, teacher and student interaction because uh, currently it's mostly uh, you know, it goes through the discussion forum, or if you have questions, it goes via email, but you do not really see the teacher live. And on top of that, uh, they were concerned about motivation. Uh, you know, if there's no teacher that maybe looks you in the eye, uh, or tells you like, hey, you have to hand in your assignment, you know, will the stud students be triggered enough to, to finish the course? And that's something uh, we, I do see right now uh, students, we have a lot of uh, applications for the courses and then in the end the students that actually take the exam is way lower than the amount of uh, students that follow the course. So that's, well, something to think about how we can improve that because you see that along the way students really like stop the course because it's, it's hard to keep up if, if if it's, if it's all you that has to do it. So, a middle group, do you have any more points uh, uh, you would like maybe to share? Okay. Oh, maybe okay, yeah. or? So maybe two. Okay. Do you have 
ideas you'd like to. Well, I just put some very random <laughs> notes, so I'll go with my notes. We, we focus on the question of is this the future, and our table is kind of divided into yes and no. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We have the yes team. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we have no choice. So they, they are the boss, so we are like, okay, yes. But it's, it's, it's a yes, yes with but. Yes. So the yes, the yes with but includes. Now with the coronavirus, it's very clear. Yeah. This is a solution. Right. It, it is going to help like with all the teaching and, and the interaction for the time being. And uh, one important thing is, for example, that it, give, it will give access to our students in Kyoto University to go abroad without this. Right. So it's safe. But then on the other hand, this coronavirus is not going to last forever. <laughs> and this cannot be a policy forever. <laughs> That's right. But think about climate change. Flying today is, yeah, yeah. you know, it's... And then one, one issue that uh, arises, especially for me, I am from Argentina, and in Argentina, not everybody has a computer. Oh. Not everybody has access to internet. They right. So there's, a, there's an ethical problem of access. Yes. And there's the ethical problem of not leaving everybody, anybody behind. Yes. So that's, that's like... Yeah, it's, it's not a no, but it's more of a question mark. How do we overcome that? Well, today, I mean, in the Netherlands, there's a lot of uh, governmental subsidies for the universities. If in the future we decide to, I don't know, make a radical change towards all online education, there could be governmental subsidy for providing laptops or Improving internet. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, I don't know if the Argentinian government can provide <laughs> that. <but laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, and of course, in other countries, you know, there's high tuition fees. But uh, well, if you if you would not have the physical classrooms anymore, um, that could be like investing in the internet or computers could be a solution. But I think it's a very good and very valid point. Yeah. Actually, not just the have or have not, because uh, in Japan, a lot of uh, young people mm -hmm. don't have laptops, but uh, they have uh, quite nice smartphones, <laughs> more expensive than cheap laptops. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not uh, uh, mm -hmm. op you know, op uh, optimal device for uh, yeah, mm -hmm. learning uh, mm -hmm. online, right? So, so that's uh, actually a yeah. different level of uh, accessibility. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. We have two, two small yes, things. Please. One has to do with quality assurance, uh -huh. which is the issue that Tam Sensei brought in the beginning. So to some extent, what you are showing us, the quality assurance is given by the framework of edX. No. But that, so, so that's, that's a question mark. Oh, you mean quality in terms of credits or quali quality of data security? Credit. Content of it's it's uh it's the the, the universities uh, are. But then you need stand a framework. You need the universities to agree on a framework for quality assurance. Yes. And that the network that you just showed us is rather small and it's very European. Yes. So it makes true. sense because it's it's among friends. But what happens when you bring a university that is very different? Mm -hmm. So that that brings a big question mark on quality assurance. Right. And then one last thing okay. that we talked about was. Uh, the, the importance of the learning ecosystem, we call it. Mm, I like that term, yes. So the, uh, <laughs> this was Lisa's idea. You can, you can explain what you meant by that. Uh, I think, uh, well, the, the idea of the ecosystem had to do with the environment, like the learning environment, when that has to do with the issue that you wrote there about interaction. It is, it is, it is a live organism. Live. So, yeah, so it <laughs> like yes. body. Yes, yeah, yeah. And when you want to ship everything online, you will lose the chance to, to be part of a living body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To uh, lose all the uh, benefits that you would get from a physical classroom. Yes. Including, uh, the discipline. Yes. Uh, learning how to become a human. Uh, a real, like uh, a human being. Discussing with each other. Yes, yeah. And discussing and in interacting with others. Yeah, yeah. So you would lose all that. We were discussing about this. Yeah, good. You know? When we talk about like uh, 
creating synergy, how this may create or uh, boost synergy, but at the same time it may produce the opposite effect. Mm. When people get together, you get more ideas, no? By discussing. Yes. But if you, if, if you don't have the, the human touch, sometimes that conversation is kind of like dry. Yeah, yeah. I can speak up from our group. We we're thinking on similar lines. Mm -hmm. And what you're presenting here is only one half <coughs> of a flipped classroom. So the other half would be the responsibility of the home university to have discussion classes. So it would yeah. be more collaborative. So the students would be online taking their classes at the host university, but then the discussions would be hosted by the home university mm. and be collaborative. Mm. So that way you could ensure quality because the students would be coming to a class one day a week, right. maybe attending lectures online three times a week, and then coming in for discussions. That, that's with, with other students following the course at the other university, but from the same university. Right. Yeah, there, there is a method in a sense called COIL, C-O-I-L. And uh, that's uh, more like what the uh, sorry, professor said. Um, because it's shared some, uh, like a, the Kyoto University has one course, 15 weeks. Uh, but uh, among those 15 weeks, only three weeks will be shared with right. other universities. Ah. Course it's not necessarily right. the same, exact same course, but a share same topic or content. Right? So the uh, could share the same online material. Right. But the discussions, as, as he suggested, uh, could happen uh, you know, so locally in a local classroom. Yes. And they, they can post you know, some their discussions online so other university students can also view and comment on them. Yes. So it's a little more complicated, but uh, I think it's good. easier to adapt um, at each university. So it's called, called COIL. And, uh, yeah. I think that's very, very yeah. yeah, it started in, in the States. But, huh. uh, so uh, several Japanese universities, uh, Tokyo Gaigo, ICU, uh, Kansai, Daiga, maybe, uh, they, they are doing uh, some. Right. Good. One more point from your group? Or was this the main cost? <laughs> so what we were talking about is in terms of sustainability. Mm -hmm. So if we are talking about the future of this kind of yeah. thing, so we have, nothing will be free. I mean, we, we saw something in your previous slide saying no cost, no limit or something. Yes, yes. So somebody has to pay that sort of Oh, yes, of course. Yes. The second concern was that most of these courses are introductory type courses, yep. four to six weeks. Yes. It's suitable for all the fields of education. For all fees? All fields, like medicine, all fields. Like no, you have to, uh, if you want to, well, of course, everyone can follow it, but if you want to make it part of your study program, you have to discuss it with your study advisor if this course can fit within your curriculum if it fits uh, for, for your program. So yes, uh, you have to take that in mind. And for the costs, of course, there's a lot of costs involved with the MOOC development um, and the universities pay for this. So of course it's not free, but because, you know, some universities offer some courses for their students for free and because of the exchange partnership, uh, we can, also offer the courses to exchange students for free because we can offer courses from other universities to our students for free. So uh, in terms of like for the students, it, it, it's free uh, if there is exchange. So, yeah. Okay, the group in the back. Yeah, I'll show you uh, uh, we <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, we talked about the, yeah, some, some topics are covered uh, by the previous groups. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, like, uh, yeah, quality assurance or like, yeah, uh, balance 
between uh, online learning and face-to-face uh, -face yes. learning. Yes. And but uh, we uh, talked also about uh, uh, kind of community develop development mm -hmm. of the, uh, especially uh, um, freshman students. So uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, usually freshman students uh, uh, start to start the, their uh, student life in April. In uh -huh. April. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, uh, some students are like yeah, as other uh, other group said, um, some students have, have less uh, connected, less um, internet connection, and uh, uh, or or even uh, even some students have uh, kind of. Uh, Community or friends, even even no friends, right? Uh, I mean, uh, they start they start their uh, their life in at the, their university and like get uh, um, get along with the, their friends mm -hmm. and and they start their kind of learning, but. Uh, you know, uh, in this in this current situation, yeah, this is quite uh, problematic. So, so, so you mean that uh, university also harbors a big part of social life, and yeah. with online learning, you don't have that social part. Yeah, maybe, right. Maybe uh, individual students uh, have have to kind of uh, learn kind of dividedly uh, if. If there is kind of so community-based uh, learning system, so how do you think about that? What does what exactly do you mean with a community-based learning system? Uh, I mean the you know uh, um, how I understand like that with you know with seeing each other in the classroom you, you can make friends and there's a social aspect and yeah. with online learning so, uh, so that's uh, uh, other uh, people oh, say like a circle uh, club activity yeah uh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, you know classroom based yeah thing. so lots of social interaction right maybe. social groups right yeah. okay so going beyond the departments and the classroom yeah yeah And it's hard because uh, usually uh, it's not virtual, then uh, a lot of exchange students can interact with the local students, right? Yeah. And then they make plans. And, and, and learn about low, like... Uh, to do this via online. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then in that sense it really differs. Yeah, yeah. Good. You want more points or...? Um, <laughs> Group and we talked about uh, uh, this phrase virtual exchange program. Uh, this term exchange means uh, exchange uh, lectures among institutions, but not among the students, as pointed out. The former group and the Mr. Yoshi point, uh, Professor Yoshi pointed out. Uh, so now uh, it's the first time for me to know the uh, coin. Uh, collaborative online international learning. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a solution. Right. So because uh, uh, this uh, VP virtual exchange program doesn't uh, exchange uh, the experience among the students. Right. So I think this query is a solution. Yeah. Uh, just, just listening what you introduced about PNP in this handout. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Any more points you discussed or you want to share? Or? Uh, no point. Or not. So, uh, it's fine. Uh, uh, just uh, what I can give on one example. Uh, uh, in English. 
。秋田国際教養大学。<笑><笑>秋田国際教養大学。ああ、ず、having a lecture which is in online about German culture。ああ。do you know？ no but it sounds interesting。I mean a kind of Japanese lecture on German culture online。Yeah, German culture, uh, <laughs> and uh, they use blockchain technology. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ready. Um, okay. So I think there are many technologies for support. I think so too. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we have gained many insights. Um, I'm definitely gonna share this also with the people in Europe and the team because I think this is very. Valid, and you brought up some new points and solutions. Um, and um, yeah, I really want to thank you for your input and being here. And we're a little running out of, well, we're over time, and I don't want to keep you any longer in here. So I hope you enjoyed uh, listening uh, to me and hear about the virtual exchange program, and also thinking about it yourself. And、um, I will, if you have any questions or comments, or later on, you can、uh, send me an email also, and or just come after me after the session right now.、Um, so again, thank you very much for coming and participating. I very much appreciate it. And、um, uh, yeah, if there's no more questions from you, then I wish you.、Uh, Good day after this. Yeah, thank you.